go and have a look at this one. For slugs. Have a dig there where the straw is, that's where you'll find them. We put slug pellets on with the drill, so it's gone in hopefully where we need it. And then if we see some slug damage now, we'll come in and yeah, put some slug pellets on. But fingers crossed, we'll try not to, because I hate just spinning them everywhere. One, I don't like doing it, and two, it's a bit expensive. So yeah, so that's why we keep checking, because there's no point in doing it just in case we'll do it if we need to. There's a slug, a little sod. It's completely, that poor leaf now, won't be able to do its job properly, you see. I mean, that one's also got a few little nips there, but obviously that's the difference, you see. Well, let's go next door and see if we go drilling. Because it is just a bit tacky still at the moment, yeah. isn't it? We bought the farm in 1974. Uh, it was about 300 acres, I think, at the time. And then we used to go, in those days, we used to have uh, wheat, barley, rape, sugar beet, potatoes, and we used to have cattle on the farm. In fact, most of it then, when we got it in 1970, it was all grass, or a lot of it was grassland. And we obviously all ploughed it all up in those days and put it all down to arable, or a lot of it down to arable. We've got very little grass now. We don't have any cattle or anything. And so in those, back in the day, we used to have uh, five or six full-time women and four full-time men with dad and myself as well and then we've uh, sort of over the years we've got out of potatoes and got out of sugar beet um, and we're now literally just the three of us on the farm myself my wife Jenny and my son Tommy and we just sort of yeah run it together my son would say he's the boss which I think he is sometimes, but I'm hopefully in charge as such. But him and then Jen Blesser does all the paperwork and all the office work, which I have to say seems to get more and more as time goes on. We, you know, we used to spend a lot of, not very long time in the office, but now we just seem to spend more and more time in the office doing paperwork and whatever, and yeah, less on the fields. So, but with my son coming into the farm, it's, it's made me keep going and yeah, be sort of hungry for it as such. He's keen to try this new system of uh, direct drilling, uh, which I hate with a passion, but obviously it, I think it is the way forward. And it'll be interesting to see how that progresses. We've gone and brought ourselves a direct drill. Uh, I was dead against it, but we'll see what happens. Um, hopefully, fingers crossed, it's the way to go. It'll certainly be the way to go in the future, I think. Uh, but it's just very nervy and I don't, yeah. It's, it's a change and I don't like change. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Hopefully it'll be dry enough, so we'll go and have a game. And I've got the rates here. So 220 kilograms a hectare of wheat. So if you get the drill out, I'll go and get the seed, and then we'll crack on. Perfect. Right. Horizon direct drill. Um, we're looking at going down the direct drilling route. That's the reason why we've got this. Um, I don't know if it's the right thing to do, but we're going to give it a go anyway. We'll get there. We'll think it's just a different way of farming that we're not used to. So we've just put winter wheat seed in and fertilizer in slug pellets. The reason why we calibrate is to make sure that the drill's putting on the right rate, kind of thing. Otherwise, it could be putting on too much or not enough. 1.2. Zero. It's about bob on. It's nice to do some wheat. We'll just do one more for that. One more, yeah. <laughs> College 
2018 or 19. And then, yeah, started here full time then. I started working on the farm about 13, just in like summers and stuff, just helping dad out. And then, yeah, came on full time straight after college. I've always been into it, I've always loved it. I haven't got the brain to do anything else. <laughs> got a nice spot as well. It's not a bad part of the world. But the way farming's going, we've got to do something differently to keep earning money. Yeah, you couldn't. You couldn't just be a farmer. Well, you'd struggle to just be a farmer these days. You've got to have some form of diversification. Started Christmas trees with um, we had them down as pheasant covers. Really, um, we've been growing Christmas trees about 20 years, um, and then we started selling them to friends and family, and then it just evolved from there. So we planted, I suppose, initially 200 Christmas trees. Uh, we've now got 9,000 in the ground, so it's grown quite well from there. For our size farm, it is a necessity. We've got to do something to survive. Um, so, of course, we're, they're so busy in the summer doing harvest, so we thought there's got to be something we can do in the winter. So, of course, naturally, I suppose, we sell Christmas trees, so why don't we do a big shop? So that's what we decided to do, which just works itself really well. And then January, February time, we just collapse. We started off with one little garden shed in 2013, and it just outgrew. So now we have the two top sheds, and I think we might be going into a third. We have had to learn everything from scratch, because obviously we just put it down for... Um, yeah, just a, a crop that we didn't really do much with. And now we belong to the British Christmas Tree Growers Association and they have been brilliant. So they, we went on an open day this year and growers from all over the country come. Um, they do competitions where the best tree goes to, um, to 10 Downing Street. I don't think we're in that space yet, but we're nearly there. Um, but that's really good fun, meeting other growers, seeing what they're doing, how they sell it. Um, I mean, crikey, we're small. We're very small compared to other people, but it's something we can grow actually might as well go and see the Christmas trees. <laughs> Roughly in this field at the moment there's us two to three hundred. Um, so this is a small plantation, um, one of our other plantations, we've got 8,000 but they're very small so we planted 2,000 this Christmas, um, so they will be ready eight, nine years time, so it's definitely a long term thing. The big trees in the background were our first ever, um, they were put in about 30, 35 years ago, so they're about 30, 35 feet tall now, yeah and they were our first pheasant covers they were. Um, so that's what gets us onto the idea of them yeah, growing Christmas trees in other plantations. So you've got to have a good imagination for this barn because inside it is full of Christmas decorations, uh, Christmas trees. We've got a little refreshment cafe in there this year. Um, we keep the combine in there um, so children can see it, or adults as well because daddies like it as well. Um, tractors um, and then out here we smother the whole floor in wood chippings and we have about 80 trees out here so people can just walk around as if they're in a forest and choose their tree. It's really hard work but it's so worthwhile. All of us muck in and do it. It's a whole family affair but we just love Christmas. Yeah, let's just hope they get the drilling finished first. Right, so we're getting low on seed now in the tank you can see. So it's radio, Dad. Copy that. He's just having his coffee. Go ahead, man. Yeah, do some seed whenever you're ready, please. Okay, well, give us five.
put him on a teleporter at probably at the age of four or five, was it? Just when he could just steer it, bless his heart, and he just loved it. He'd sit on my knee all the time and steer and whatever. I had a lovely picture of him. I was rolling a field and I took him with me and he's literally fast asleep on the floor of the cab. And yeah, because he loved it. He just it wouldn't get him out of tractor. And then I thought, yeah, I'm going to have a job here. I can't sell the farm. I'll have to keep it and work it. So it is lovely. And I think that is the sad thing of farming really today. The youngsters, there's not the youngsters involved in it. And it's a worry really that I think yeah, agriculture for the young people is yeah, on the decline. So it is lovely. Yes, I think it is great that he is interested in it. I'm only going to keep it until he has it and hopefully he'll keep it and he'll have a son or whatever. If he doesn't, he better soon hurry up because then we'll know if we can sell it together. Then we can. <laughs> but when, when I started, doing, well obviously I followed what Dad did and we literally just cultivated everything. And then you knew it was safe in a way, it was weatherproof because if it rained a lot we've got a tilth and whatever. Whereas the way we're looking at now, like we're doing now, is direct drilling and you're trying to let the, the plants do it. So you put a cover crop in and then the roots go down and help the structure of the soil and whatever and then hopefully you then just come in with a direct drill and drill your wheat without cultivating it is the you know the goal at the end of the day and you're then relying on your worms to do more for you the roots of the plants that do more for you and whatever um, now whether it will work or not i don't know well it's got to work because it's the way forward tom is very keen at it but i'm not so keen but oh yeah we've got to alter it haven't we for the future of farming He's, in fact, Tom is very similar to me. Our brains are here, I always said, in our arms. We're very practical. And that's where Jen comes in, which works beautifully as the family, is that she sits in the office and answers the technical questions and then we just do the work and get on and do it sort of thing. It's definitely in your blood. I, I couldn't sit at a desk for more than half an hour. I don't even, when I'm in the office with Jen, I'm in there for half an hour and then the end, well, we're end up arguing because I can't, yes, I hate it. I'd sooner stand in the rain than I would do that. And it is a way of life. It's not, you know, nine to five. Here we are now, I don't know what the time is now, six o'clock. It's still nice and dry, but we'll carry on till, yeah, we get bored. So we'll be here probably till midnight drilling tonight, as long as the weather stays with us, um, because you have to. Yeah, well, we came to, we bought the farm. Oh, let him just walk past you. Now, ruin the shot. Sorry. I just built it up. Sorry.